This week on Waxing the Porpoise, G-Baby and the usual suspect Steve are pleased to welcome Logan, Naderade, and Thon from the Ghoulish University podcast to discuss what some believe to be one of the best action films of all time, Gareth Evans' The Raid 2 from 2014. Join us as we discuss this surprisingly layered film that is no doubt punctuated by some intensely choreographed action set pieces, add to Logan's well of gay fanfiction, patricide, and debate on the better assassin gimmick, dual-wielding hammers, baseball bat, or raptor claws. Now, I always thought bucket hats were kind of Streisand, but Bonoir is really rocking the shit in this one. Let's wax this hand-to-hand porpoise. Welcome to Waxing the Porpoise. We are back again, episode 57 now, where we are talking about The Raid 2 from 2014. Tonight, we have some friends of the show joining us to get that out of the way. Of course, you have myself, Jim G. Baby. (laughs) And to my virtual right, we have the usual suspect, Steve. And I'm 25, dickhead, and that's a child. <laughs> Do you know going, karate? Man? Doing good. <laughs> uh, bring me the house Somalian. Um, and then, as I alluded to, we have our friends from Ghoulish University joining us for this flick, the full crew. So we're, we're trucking heavy this evening. Uh, so to get us started, we have from Ghoulish University, Logan. Ah! <laughs> <Excuse me! laughs> How's it going, Logan? Am, hey there. I am so happy that that was my moment. <laughs> It, it was my actual audio. Like I didn't even get a beat, like a movie. I got my own. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> what, what was she that? just recently went to a T Swift concert, and that uh, was her yelling. <laughs> Taylor yeah. Swift was about to start performing "The Man," and I went, "Yes, bitch!" And she <laughs> baby has found I, she's found quite a bit of delight in that, and it makes me happy. <laughs> Well, she started, she's like, don't you ever just like feel strong or powerful? And like, she like flexed and then the whole crowd fucking just flipped (laughs) shit. And she's all, yes, bitch. (laughs) 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 Just that picturing that fucking just cracked me the hell up. Um, And then, of course, we have also joining us from Ghoulish University, Naderade. Hello. <laughs> I've, I've never, I've never yeah. <laughs> tried so hard to not laugh out loud during these bumps before. <laughs> My yes. chest is in pain for not, right now. I'm trying to keep quiet. <laughs> How's it going, man? It's going really good. Really good. How about you nice. guys? Great. Great to have you. And then uh, rounding out Ghoulish Uni, we have the Professor of Ass Trilogy, Thon. What you doing out here with all this ass? <laughs> Double cheeked up on a Thursday afternoon, hella ass. <laughs> How's it going, man? <laughs> it is. It, I was double cheeked up this Thursday afternoon. That's a good poll. <laughs> I had to. The stars aligned on that one. <laughs> Well, we are tickled to have the full crew here with us. This actually, I, it came up, I think, in the uh, Marathon VHS 2 episode you had us on for, and we were going off on tangents, and the raid got brought up, threw down the Pepsi challenge of it being like one of the best top action films ever, and Steve and I had never heard of it, or at least never seen it, so we're like, fuck yeah, it sounds dope, Let's let's do it, so here we are. So... This is a new one for me and Steve, right? You've never seen this? Oh, yeah. Never seen it. Never heard of it. New nothing. Okay. 
which of uh when had you guys all seen it i guess did you introduce it to each other and or have you guys just seen the first one yeah i'd seen i'd seen both of them uh, i saw them a couple years a few years ago three years ago so something like that um kind of heard about it through like a po- another podcast that was ranking like action movies and stuff and they were going off about these movies so i was like oh i gotta check those out so i had seen them before sweet and what about you logan So this was actually my first watch. Um, I had not heard of them before the VHS episode either. And then um, I watched both of them for the first time on Sunday. And they're now like, just, they're great. (laughs) Word. What about you, Naderade? Yeah, so I saw the first one probably 10 years ago. I don't know, I don't even remember how I came across it. I watched it, fell in love with it. And... I heard right after that that they're making a sequel, so I got really excited about that and watched that as soon as I could. Uh, and that was obviously a lot of fun to watch. So yeah, I've been I've been around with these movies for quite some time now. Sweet. And this guy, it, what, maybe not this same guy, but one of the dudes in it, you you had recommended. Uh, there's another movie similar to this. What was that one that Rama that Rama dudes in? Yeah, he's in he's in a few. So they've used him and he's in both the raid and the raid two, and then he's also in um, uh, Timo has used him for his Netflix movies that he's been pumping out. Right. Uh, Headshot, um, night, night comes, comes for, for us. us. The night that's the one. I was the night comes for us. Yeah, that one's really good. Um, I've heard that the, one floated around mm-hmm. too. They're all really circles. good. They're There's really a third good. one out there too. Okay, I forget what it's yeah. called. That that Steve for frame of reference that Timo guy they're talking about is another director who is he Indonesian as well? Like that's his nationality or let's see, so let's say Southeast Asian. Steve uh, knows Timo. Director. He was I? from the uh the 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 Safe Haven. In VHS Safe Haven, yeah, in VHS. The one too, you didn't like. You, <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Yeah, I was even thinking about that earlier today and like, ugh. Did the you recognize <laughs> Uh, the, I didn't, but maybe it was like a subconscious thing because I was thinking about it when I was watching the movie. <clears> there's a yeah, there, there's there an are, actor that's in this. There were a couple in actors in um in uh Safe Haven that were in this in Raid Two. Wow, interesting. so they're kind of reusing actors. Yeah, I saw what was it was like that main the president or like the the cult leader of the compound was in it for a, mm-hmm. a hot minute. In, oh, in oh yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what was his name? I can't remember. I had, I for- yeah, we don't know any of these names. No. We wouldn't be able <laughs> yeah. to pronounce it anyways. So this, I thought it was interesting too. This, uh, the guy who directed this, Gareth Evans, is a is a dude from the UK, and mm-hmm. he's. A, it looks like he's exclusively made foreign films, and they're they don't even have a English dub. You got to uh, watch this, read read along with the subtitles. Um, well. Not to contradict you, but I was looking up, I was looking for fun one star reviews. And so one of the places I like to check is Amazon because people leave the most batshit crazy reviews on there. (laughs) And about 99% of the bad reviews on there were about how bad the English dub version was that Amazon was selling on there. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Did any of you guys watch, sorry to get a little off topic, did any of y'all watch Squid Games? I did. I did. Yeah. Did y'all accidentally yeah. turn the English dub on at any point? I did. It was horrific. Was it as bad? <laughs> Do you think it was as bad as that? I don't know. I mean, I literally read a hundred negative reviews that were all about how bad the English dub on this one was. So I don't know. It's I think left. it's, it's got to be. Left. It's got to be pretty bad. So I've only watched the English dub versions of the raid, and oh. um, I mean it doesn't bother me. I'm also really lazy and don't like to read and watch at the same time. <laughs> uh, but as don't. far as I can tell, it's fine. Don't yeah. know how to read. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on to you. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I guess we're just easing ourselves into the beginning of this wild, action-packed flick. 
And I, I was told that you don't have to necessarily have seen the first raid to enjoy this, which I will agree with. But part of me is thinking like, I think there's probably some connective tissue there, but especially with this rock uh, Rama guy and like all that he's been through uh, I'd like to have that fuller picture. So I'm going to go back and flashback probably to uh, the first raid, but um, I guess, can you guys give like a quick snippet of like intro of, where we left off at the end of raid. It's basically judge dread. They had to fight their way up a fucking like building full of gangsters and compound deal. <laughs> yeah. And then this, the, the raid two takes place very, sh- very shortly thereafter those events directly after, I think. I don't know. So, I, I, I'm, I'm confused by that. I think there was some time that passed there. Yeah. But you see them sitting at the table. You see him sitting with blue polo guy um because they show the scene where he's sitting with blue polo guy and they like raise the gun up because they're about to shoot the guy with the white hair who was in the first one and then they just fucking kill him and he looks at them he's like that's fucked up (laughs) (laughs) like i know that that had to have been directly after because he's wearing the same shirt and they're both look like shit that that was i think they flash back to that though as the, the way i read it was they flash back to this is what happened immediately after, but then I thought they'd jump back forward. Okay. And yeah, I can that see does, that. Because his scar is healed up a little bit. That, he gets that does make sense. Also, the very beginning, the cold open takes place where Bejo or Bejo, I would say Bejo, but that's because, you know, I, I live in Texas. I think it's Bejo, whatever. The guy with the cane, whenever he's killing, the guy who he kills at the very beginning is Rama's brother, who yeah. plays like a pretty big role in the first one. Damn. So I yeah. was reading some I was reading some trivia and it said that this one is supposed to take place two hours after the ending of the first one and then it jumps forward in the prison scene, mm. obviously, to two yep. years. So for whatever that's worth. Gotcha. Okay. That kind of clears it up. So all right. So yeah, that we start off our, our main guy that carries us through this is his name is Rama, uh, who is pretty badass uh he he reminded me of uh tony jaw right off the bat um any ong bok fans out there um so we start with him uh it kind of felt like the departed a little bit so he's like an inside guy he's going into a prison he's told for not very long to try to get the goods uh on a on a high high profile target uh, for the Indonesian police. Do they have a special police force? Are they like special forces? Or sh- I totally missed on that. If he's part of like some cadre of bad motherfuckers. I don't know, but it reminded me there was a Steven Seagal movie where he was going to go into prison undercover, but they like lose his file. And now he's just in there forever. Do you know what? I can't remember what it was called. I don't, but I've seen that trope. I mean, they did yeah. that in face off too. Yeah. Where he's in the wind. You know what they say? They're in the wind. Yeah. Like when they don't have support or like help. I've heard like, that. Okay. See, there you go. See, I didn't pull <laughs> that out of my ass just now. <laughs> uh, so, so he, he's going to prison for not very long and then he ends up spending two years, three years in prison. Three, uh, three years, years because he, Is it three years. He got the wrong guy or something like that. He beat up the wrong no, kid. He, he, nope. had, he beat up the right guy, but yes. the guy he beat up was uh, the, the son, son of a politician. politician. Politician, yeah. And the politician was like, give him, throw the book at it, like give him yeah. the maximum. Yeah. So they gave him, he was expecting two or three months. They gave him three years. He got out in two. Oh. Uh, mm-hmm. Yep. But then his, the guy that he, uh, buddies up against to get close to his name is is it uko i yeah. think so who steve yes. you you had mentioned this is your uh james asian, franco asian james franco yep so yeah the, the the pretty boy was involved too but he got off like with a slap on the wrist no he was, was in there for, he was something, in there for something unrelated oh, okay he yeah. just got out beforehand so when yes. rama's ready to get out uh He's the one who picks him up, but there is a pretty brutal uh, fight scene in the prison yard. That's like the muddiest field. Oh you my can god! Picture in your mind, yeah, it's a mud Dude. ball. <laughs> so I, I was. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say I didn't understand 
who was supposed to be getting killed. And then after, after a certain point, they're all muddy. They're just fighting indiscriminately. It does not matter who's around. Just yeah. beat the shit out of whoever is right next to you. Prisoners and cops. Yeah. <laughs> fucking getting fucked up. So I re- I was rewatching <laughs> some, I was reviewing like some of the big fight scenes before them, like before we started recording tonight. Um, and I forgot that Rama just straight up like breaks that dude's leg like at the knee and I yelled. <laughs> I was like, Oh <laughs> yeah. It's not supposed to bend that way. <clears throat> there, are, there are a lot of those. Yeah. <laughs> I was one of my favorites was the big, huge, I commented on it. It was a dude. It looked like a mega, like a Mario, the bald <laughs> dude with the huge stash. That just yes. Gets warmed by like eight people with like Billy clubs or like little wooden batons. And he just, he wears like 30 shots to the face and he's like, Rah! and there's blood just <laughs> flying everywhere. What'd you think of this part, Steve, where you're like, Oh shit, this is like, this is the kind of action movie we're in for. Cause this is the first, uh, the first major source of action, right? Well, they had the, the one where he's in the bathroom stall, right? The before bathroom that. stall. Oh, right, 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 right. That kind of sets the tone for the film. That's right. Yeah, the the first, I think the first like 10 or 15 minutes, I was definitely confused and I was thinking that motherfucker said I didn't need to watch the first one, but I feel so <laughs> lost. I will apologize for that because I I have never watched them like back to back like that, but I did Sunday and I was like, oh shit, I guess this does tie together pretty well. <laughs> it, it's, okay, it's okay because I just, I just told myself like, okay, put that out of your mind. Just watch this. You'll figure it out. It's not going to be, you know, that crazy, yeah. but... Uh, yeah, that scene was awesome, and yeah, that was that was kind of the first little appetizer for what's to come, and yeah, it, it didn't it didn't really slow down after that. I will say, I did find this to be a little bit long for me, but uh, I did too. I think but, I, so I felt frame the full of, length, the frame of but I was into. But back to but, back to that. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no. Back to the the bathroom stall scene for just a minute. I like that scene so much because you kind of immediately see how Rama like uses his surroundings to his advantage, like the way he would close the door and he would open it. And when he like grabs that dude's foot and just like yanks him down on the door on his fucking balls, like, (laughs) ow. (laughs) Got him right in the yam bag. I'm not even a dude and I cringed. (laughs) Oh, or even one of the first guys, he puts his face like through the toilet. Like, oh, oh the yeah. worst Brutal. swirly of all time. Brutal. <laughs> yeah. This is I, I, like I, how they, they like slowly sorry. build up everything right before the fight hits. Like, yeah. Yeah. bathroom stall, you see the it's quiet and the door is shaking. You're seeing the screw come on loose. Or even in the mud pit. Uh, you yeah. see Rama oh, the broom just, handle. Undo, undoing the broomstick yeah. and yeah. the rain coming down. They, they do such a good job building building the tension right before everything goes down. Yeah, um, And then they deliver. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're shot really well. Like it's all like a lot of it's like just continuous. The camera's just going through the fight, going going through the mob. Yeah, which got to be hard for that many people and not many cuts, like like you're saying, like a continuous and like, so how many moves they got to like get down like 80 or 100 moves like per shot, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, it seems wild. It kind of reminded me of the only other thing I've seen like that's this like fast paced and like brutal was uh, one of the fight scenes in old boy where it looks like a 2d side scroller kind of oh, and when sure. he has the, the hammer i think the hallway yeah in the hallway the, oh the yeah. hallway scene and he like he beats like 20 people's asses like brutally like breaking bones and like yeah like hammer through the jaw shit like that but then this has got another like uh flavor of almost like like him using his surroundings logan kind of like jackie chan kind mm-hmm. of maybe not that kind of slapsticky but uh Definitely, like using like the environment shit was, is super cool. I like I like that the style of this. Have fighting. y'all ever seen Wayne's World two? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, whenever Mike Myers goes, "Oh, this is going to be important later." <laughs> <laughs> Foreshadowing. Uh, so <clears throat> yeah, so this whole pr- the prison scene's dope. 
And then he gets out, and then uh, our boy Babyface, Jace, uh, uh, what's his name? Austin Butler, Asian Austin Butler, picks up his boy Rama. Asian Austin Butler, that's right. <laughs> I like that, I like that even better. <laughs> He's got the Elvis little hair swoop. It's kind of. Yeah. I, whenever we were watching it, because um, I know Steve wasn't there, but all of us, we watched it together. And um, I remember we were like, man, he looks like a fucking greaser with that hair. Yeah, totally. To the 50s vibe. And his daddy's the mob boss. Or like the, the, <laughs> I did the, forget two things. I have, I have it on in the background. I forgot two things on this prison scene. <laughs> When the yeah. when the SWAT team first tries to run in and help, right before the the Mario scene where you're talking about the guy, guys taking the shots to the dome, yeah. there's a guy that's pulling the guy's yeah. jaw apart. Yeah. Oh yeah, just in like the it's background, so kind of like yeah. yeah. And then a little bit after that, uh, Rama takes a, a shank and stabs the dude's calf and drags it down his leg oh, to yeah. his ankle. No, he pulled the shank out of his back of his oh, yeah. shoulder and used it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking, thinking about like mixing blood, Ugh. like the mud. Um, on top oh, of the yeah. wound. <laughs> oh yeah, and that you know that that mud was 35 percent pig shit. Or manure, I was going to say that like, that mud had AIDS, so blood on blood is not the <laughs> not the worst there. <laughs> yeah, that stuff probably smelled so bad. Um, so now that he's yeah. gone through that kind of trial by fire, he kind of he is. Well, he also protected uh, Uko. Uh, yeah. He's mm-hmm. picked him up, who he befriended. And that's good because Uko's dad, uh, Bangoon, is like a regional crime lord, like heavy guy uh, in Indonesia there. Is this in Jakarta, like the capital city? Is that where it's yeah. supposed to take place? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. And so he curries favor with Uko's dad, and he's like, kind of bring it it's a bringing him into the fold kind of scene which set you up with this dope little penthouse thing and you're gonna work for me now and fucking you be my muscle and and my heavy and like don't fuck up you know like i'm on your ass and then there's like i think that right before he gets picked up he rips out like a transponder or some shit Mm because he's on the inside cops and he has the instinct to just like fucking rip that out which is good because then he makes him strip take uh, off your clothes the crime box. Yeah. Mm, Let me see yes, that. Oh. turn around. Um, so, yeah, so he doesn't get found out. And then he calls his superior, who's kind of in the background. What's his name? Uh, Bucket Hat. Yeah, Bucket Hat. Bucket man. Hat. Yeah, I commented, I hate a Bucket Hat, but this guy pulls it off for me. Steve, what say you? Um,. It really depends. In general, I'm also anti-bucket hat, but I guess in the right circumstance, I'd, I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> but you, do you agree that he pulls it off? I think he pulls it off. Yeah. Is it allowed here? Sure. I mean, it's like a kangle. Most of the time I'm opposed to it, but Samuel L., no one's going to say shit to him. Right. <laughs> Fair enough. Um so yeah, that's his his like handler, I guess, for the cop side. And then this takes us to uh, his first Rama his first just, job. Yeah, when they which is the, the porno distribution company. <gasps> yes, yeah. this is where crazy guy from Safe Haven is. Yeah, yeah, the president guy. He's like the the really squirrely looking character at the end yeah. of the world's longest table. Yeah. Did that strike <laughs> you too? Something <laughs> about that table. I was like, why is it so big? Yeah. It was yeah, like made what, out of like granite, pure, like raw stone. It was at yeah. least twenty by eight size. Of the <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought, and I thought uh, Uko had a really good speech about like, yeah, you've been paying the same for so long, but now we know you're selling shit. So you know, I I, I like that whole back and forth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then he sees so, him going for the shotgun and. Yep, Decides that's another tension part that's really cool. In a room. How it goes under the table, like that long shot and under, and nice, mm-hmm. it like slowly like sets it up. It's like here we go, like you're going up the fucking ratcheting up the fucking roller coaster. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the scene was dope too. During this scene, do we hear the dripping of like the water, and that's how you see him look down at the puddle? 
and he sees, or am I just uh, thinking yeah. about, I watched Evil Dead for the first time this weekend and there's like a huge dripping scene in that too. So I may be mixing those up. No, he does have like a Spidey Sixth Sense moment once or twice. Maybe it was here. Or maybe, well, there I remember a reflection. It, I don't remember hearing the dripping, but I something. know he looked down and saw him reaching under. Yeah, he's he in the puddle. Yeah, yeah he was already yeah. kind of eyeballing that dude and he saw his hands moving. And then he kind of was looking down, he was eyeballing him up, and then when he was looking down, he saw from the puddle where his hands were reaching that there yeah. was a gun under the table. So ignore everything I just asked. <laughs> <laughs> he was using those eagle eye skills like Steve's dad was talking about. Mams gotta watch, and you gotta look watch at their hands. hands. What are the hands doing? <laughs> we so, all yeah, learned a lesson that day. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's, it kind of shows like it adds to Rama's like, that's his X factor. Like he's like, he's just like a cut above. He's like, he's got that little extra, you know, that makes him bad as fuck. Well, that's um, what like he, he, he sussed out in the prison scene. He was looking around at all the guys that were whispering and yeah, where they were he looking. Starts twisting the and broom, he, saw yeah. the, he saw the guy coming in and he goes, okay, th- this is, they're going to try and kill, uh, Uko now. And yeah. that's where he knew, he knew where everyone was coming from and all that. Like oh, the so old, they were they were coming for Uko. I thought for some reason maybe they were coming for him, but that makes more sense. Yeah, they were yeah. coming because that gets revealed later. Okay, um, that, all that that explains my confusion about that later part. I'm like, who the fuck are these guys? Yeah, those were. <laughs> yeah, what's this tattoo mean? I'm confused. <laughs> this and then that gets sold drug. at the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, that, yeah. We'll get to that in a, minute, in a little bit. That Yo, was- man, you ever get the feeling you was being watched? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you, guys, did you guys uh, happen to see the giant uh, strap-on hog that came out? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. We totally glossed that How over. How could we Holy forget? Shit. This movie's got a lot of stuff going on. Whenever shit started hitting the fan, I was like, imagine if you're the guy... Who has that dick in his ass right now? <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> not that's not probably comfortable. like a welcome. <laughs> all that chaos is probably a, like a welcome respite from what's happening to him currently. <laughs> Getting pounded by this giant hog, strap on, and now I've got an open shooter. Yeah. Mondays, right? <laughs> God, I hate Mondays. <laughs> yeah, that thing was no joke. It was like. A baby arm holding a plum. I think I'd be more scared of, scared of the strap on than the guns. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh. Oh, it's too easy. Um, so uh, where do we go from here after the the blown drug deal then we get so, that shows so the, he basically has proved himself to the boss yeah and then now he's it oh yeah it's sowing the seeds of like uko's like disdain with his father and he's he's you know i want to take more resp- responsibility on i want to move higher up the ranks yada 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 you're an old fuck i'm the <laughs> I'm, I'm the new shit and then he gets kind of like chastised by his dad a little bit or like knocked down a peg and so his asshole side comes out at like this karaoke bar where he's just oh. treat, treating the women like scum. And Rama's like, fuck, what am I doing here? I'm trying to like see my wife and kid. I had never <laughs> seen born or like, so we have to talk about this karaoke scene for just a minute because um, first of all, I would love to karaoke in a little room like that with just my homies. Like those are, th- those are real, right? <laughs> they have yeah, just tiny little does, karaoke yes. rooms like that. Second of all, so he goes on his little, like, I'm a spoiled rich boy rant to this poor girl. Oh, yeah. And then he forces her to sing, and he starts singing the song with her in the mic. Yeah. That was <laughs> like, rough. that as scene was, crying. like, as hilarious <laughs> as it was, like, unsettling. I could not stop laughing. It was so funny. It would have been funny if they were singing Freddie Jackson. <laughs> It's the quiet storm. G baby. 
Has just anybody even reviewing... listened to that episode yet? <laughs> just no, I don't out. think so. We we just reviewed King of New York and Freddie Jackson shows up, which <laughs> fucking triggered my <laughs> rock me baby tonight for old time's sake. So <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> that was fun. Yeah, expect 13 or 14 more of those this evening. Uh, I was, I, I was pretty good about it. I only hit it twice, I believe. <laughs> so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could have gone full morning zoo radio on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this what? is when when the whore tells Uko he's just like a, a debt collector, and it's where his insecurity really flares up, and that's when he goes back to Papa and is like, "I want more." Yeah. Okay. When the whore <clears throat> tells him. Yeah. The, the, the whore. <laughs> And his, his dad is like, you're still just a little baby gangster. <laughs> <laughs> as Gwen, as G frantically searches for the sound bump. Fill, oh. fill for time. Fill for time. Oh. Oh. BG. That means a baby gangster. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> That's an old That's cut great. of... Uh, Easy E talking shit about Dr. Dre back in the day. He Rest he easy. Called, he called him a studio gangster. He was faking the funk. He just, <laughs> he just a BG. So uh, um, he ends up, so security comes in, the girls kind of get ushered away, and then he goes out on a phone call. Uh, some, I guess, I don't know if you guys, um, I don't remember if you guys missed it when we watched it or not, but he does drop like a transponder in who yeah. goes wallet there yeah oh right because he finds that way later on spoiler alert yeah so i got a little theory on that phone call do you think that phone call is he's talking to uh bucho thon the one with the cane that um oh like he's yeah, pissed Beige- off and he's like Beige- okay i'm yeah. gonna fucking i'm gonna yeah. go in cahoots with this dude yeah yeah dad. that's yeah. what i'm kind of curious because he he isn't dead had his little fight and now He's all fired up, and now he's ready to uh, team up with Bejo. I think that's yeah, what that this was, phone call's about. about. Yeah, getting His insulted by the love. getting oh, in, insulted by the the hooker was the last straw. <laughs> oh man, I completely blanked on that, but there was some good source like uh, material for gay fan that. fictions all over. Yeah, and y'all can't tell fiction. me that shit wasn't canon. Uko is <laughs> he is. Y'all can't tell me he's not like one of the most gay characters y'all have ever seen. Y'all can't tell me he's not. He, <laughs> he likes is. to play with Bejo's cane, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I, I, I don't see it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they even say it in the, later in the movie. Spoiler alert. They're together. And I was like... They're together and they y'all shut the fuck up. <laughs> they did not mean it like that. <laughs> don't you don't you remember the sex scene with those two? <laughs> Naderade got a different cut of the movie. <laughs> got the Downloaded the wrong the, the yeah. wrong raid. What do you mean you didn't watch it on Netflix? It's not on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, what was it like raid colon redemption? Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, the first one out of just out of step, out of cadence a little bit. Because it's the raid redemption. But if it, you read it, the raid colon redemption, then <laughs> <laughs> you're dealing with a whole different bag of cats. Uh, so somebody refresh my... Where do we leave off after Uko throws his uh, titty so this tantrum? Is where, this is where Uko meets up with... And I thought they called him Bejo, but maybe it's Bejo. I don't know. I'll yeah, say Bejo. I'm going to say Bejo as well. I'm going to make an objective so. decision. It's Bejo. This is where they meet up. They have their sweet little intimate dinner and wine. And then Bejo provides him with these five guys who, up until now, was unclear to me why. Um, but it has since been explained. And oh, this is the throat slitting scene. The, yeah, yeah, yeah the exact brutal. knife oh, execution. Yeah. Brutal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Foreplay. This- <laughs> yeah, because they drug this out over like ten minute period. Like, yeah, they were like having talking, a whole conversation. Like, yeah, yeah, like e- each person got like a two three minute, and then, and then 
it just played it out, which I, I really liked. I like that. This, I don't know. I mentioned it during the uh, live watch we did, but this, this movie kind of reminds me a lot of um, only God forgives with uh, Brian Gosling directed by Nicholas Winding Refn. It was his follow up to drive that kind of bombed, but I think it gets a lot of hate uh, undeservedly. I thought it was a fun flick. It's real gre- gory, like brutal, a lot of hand to hand stuff like this, but you didn't like it. Naderade. I did not. I like Drive. I didn't like the Only God Forgives as much. Yeah, see, that's weird. Most people like Drive, and I didn't care for Drive, really. I saw it after kind of like the hype had settled down, like two or three years after, and I was like, that was it. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, the music was dope when he's driving, but I don't know. Something about it just didn't click. But I love Only God Forgives, so what are you going to do? I might have to revisit it. I mean, it, could um, be the, it could be the curse of high expectations. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will say, uh, spoiler alert, I wasn't as thrilled with this as I thought I would be, but it could be chalked up to like a, just a bad beer situation. I did watch this pretty late and I was fucking like died fried and laid by the side, like the end of a Saturday or whatever it was. And I was just like beat. I remember at a point I was like, I might just pass out right now and do the old Irish goodbye and not say anything and just go no, to I, bed. I, def- I definitely heard you snoring on the other end. <laughs> yeah, you you dozed off. You dozed off for a couple minutes. <laughs> so, check out the first go. one because it's shorter, and while there's not as much story to it, I think I may like the first one better too. Yeah, it seemed like this one. It did have really cool like dynamic like punctuated action scenes that were hardcore and they really Brutal. poured on towards the end that i really liked but there's a couple like maybe like middle third and like right after like the halfway point where it kind of lagged for me pretty good um yeah or i was like come on let's, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but <laughs> yeah like this this scene this, this third set slitting scene like i really like it there's a lot of good conversation but it is kind of it is kind of slow and drug out. Yeah. Um, you know, there's some tension there or whatever, but, and five dudes get their throat slit, but um, it probably could have been tightened up quite a bit there and not, not as drug out. It could have yeah. been three dudes. Yeah. The thing, the thing about the slow scenes though, is that they're actually like there for a reason. They're at least there for plot points. Really? I mean, yeah, they are a little bit slower, but they serve a purpose. Unlike a lot of other movies, where they just have scenes to have scenes in them. Right. Yeah, and I think it was it for me at least. It could have been like I said. I was just so tired that I didn't. I was like a little bit bored just because of that. But yeah. I respected that they they are trying to tell like a pretty rich story and like the the double crossing that's going on and the politics mm-hmm. in the background between you know the rival Japanese gang and then. Uh, Uko's dad trying to keep the peace because they've had it for so long. He's trying to play it like the long con, like the long fucking game and like Mm -hmm. maintain peace. And then it's like the trope of like his hot headed son, like, you know, just incredulous getting bored. I want to, when's going to be my turn acting impulsive, trying to make moves and adding like uh, just fucking up all the stability. And he wants, he wants to start a war, which is also, he's got, Beho and is in his back pocket too with his own designs on things it itching him on so it does it is layered and i appreciate it for that but i felt like there was a little bit of fat maybe on either end of those Mm -hmm. important kind of parts they could have trimmed down on but um yeah well i think overall i enjoyed the flick but I, i was just slightly and i like you say it was probably heightened expectations like thinking this was gonna be more like the first one like the rollicking like fucking balls to the wall action with with fewer uh, kind of plot uh, building scenes. Sorry, Steve, what were you going to say? Oh, no, I was just going to say uh, this is where we meet Prokoso, the, yes. the, ho- the hobo with the machete who dispatched about 12 people without even using the machete and just <laughs> saved it for the last guy. <laughs> Yeah. Nate, or uh, I guess Naderade or Thon, do either of you want to explain like the cool thing about this guy in the movie? Oh, yeah. So this guy, what would you say his name was there, uh, Stephen? Procoso, I think. Yeah. Procoso? Yeah. yeah. 
So Precoso, the guy who plays, um, uh, he was in the original, the first raid, and he played a big part in there. He played Mad Dog, and he was like the biggest badass in the movie. Uh, so they just brought, and not only that, he was actually the choreographer in... No. Bo- no? I'm pretty sure he's no. choreographer. Rama, the Rama's the choreographer. Well, I'm going to do some research now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't fight, believe me. Fight, fight, fight. <laughs> I, I might have misheard all this game fair. Or I'll go to the papers. Oh my God. <laughs> Love I'll it. Go to the papers. Take a pants. Are, did you say he's the same character or the same actor from the first uh, movie? Same, same actor, different characters in both movies. Okay, that's confusing as shit, but. It is. Yeah, but it was very dress- confusing for me when I first watched it. Okay. I think that's why they had to lay it on thick with like the fucking super disheveled hair and facial hair to maybe kind of make that stark contrast. Cause gotcha. I did watch okay. a couple, like a trailer and a couple snippets on YouTube of the first one. And this dude, he's got way different hairstyle. So I think it just, it's like this dude's a fucking badass and it sucks that we killed him off in the first one. It's like, let's just bring him back and fucking throw some costume and makeup on him because he's so dope, which I'm, I'm cool and- with that. They give him entirely different character descriptions, too. Like, in this one, he's a family man who kills because he has to. But in the first one, he is not that. (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) (laughs) There can be more than one, Thon. I'm telling you, he's the fight coordinator in the raid. I'm trying. I think he and I think for this one, too. But he is the fight choreographer. Rama is not. Is that the same thing as choreographer? I mean, there were some intense dance scenes that we haven't talked about. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right, yeah, so after he stabs that dude in the, the alley, that was pretty cool. Then... Um, action choreographer. Next? He becomes, like, what, the sacrificial lamb to try to start this gang war, right? Yeah, so that that's... Um, Beho wanted um, or needed, like you said, a sacrifice basically to start the war. So he took the most trusted guy that his dad had that they'd known forever and he put a hit on him basically. Yeah, in the nightclub. So thinking that that would would make the dad like react out of emotion and, and impulsively like, okay, fuck it, war's on with the Japanese, let's let's do it. But uh, that doesn't work. Uh, but this <laughs> this scene I, I commented to it reminded me of Kill Bill a little bit, like yeah, the, in the nightclub. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. And point of order, Naderade, let it be known, just showed that uh, Prokoso Yayan Ruhian was an action coordinator. Oh shit. Suck it! Oh man, how's that taste? But what about well, that was the plan fun. to give you a boner. <laughs> you got one. <laughs> Jesus. Wait, wait, what did Thon just show us? Because Thon also showed us proof of Rama doing something. I don't know. That was a little dubious because you just showed us a picture of Rama, and I was like, well, what does that prove? <laughs> Get the receipts. Because <laughs> if you I look know, up, the you look discuss up. there was so great. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, so didn't someone? Didn't y'all just talk about that? Didn't y'all just, just say y'all look hated? at the credits? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what is it? Eighty-eight keys. The or the what do they call those? I from think it's the, crazy eighty-eight or something. Crazy oh, eighty-eight. Yeah. There you go in the nightclub with our boy Prokoso. This was one of my favorite scenes. Probably he walks favorite. through the whole army. Proceeds to dispatch 39 people with a nightclub. <laughs> using a nightclub and a machete. <laughs> he uses the whole nightclub to dispatch yeah. everyone. <laughs> There's a little parkour sprinkled in here. Parkour. Uh, so I... Th- I liked how how much of his backstory and like that they packed in such a small space because by the end of all that and then like he it's like bloodied and all fucked up and he gets fucked up 
a little bit more, and then he's mortally wounded. It's snowing in this like shitty like uh, like alleyway just outside mm-hmm. of this nightclub, and he's he they show him like looking at his locket. I think they do one like flashback or just like a side scene where he goes and sits down, yeah, uh, to talk to his baby mama, and mm-hmm. she's not stoked with him because he looks like a fuck. He looks like Marv from Home Alone Two, only worse. <laughs> Specifically, um, Marv, right after he gets electrocuted. Yes. <laughs> Good clarifying point. Or the lead singer from Coheed and Cambria. I thought they yes. were trying to shoehorn yes. a lot of backstory in. Like, uh, here's this guy, real quick. Uh, you're going to want to like him. Um, and then he's, and then he's in shy right now, so you should be really upset about it. I was like, Jesus Christ. I kind of I bought it. I guess I'm a sucker, but I liked how much I I appreciated the economy of uh, the story, like into this person to try to get you to care. But I guess it falls on deaf ears. Anyhow. In a nine hour long movie, you appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> it's, only like, it's only like two hours, 12 minutes. The first one is like a half hour shorter. So maybe you'll like the first the one. The one I watched was two and a half hours at least. 220. What, what is it? It's a... Uh, did you watch it the was, director's cut? <laughs> it was two and a half hours if it was a minute. <laughs> Might be close to two and a half hours. <laughs> Moving so this, on. Is one of the, this is one of the things I noticed that I also really like in this movie is the, the sound design. So like in that alleyway after he's done in the nightclub is when he like drags the dude's face across the concrete, concrete oh, wall. Yeah. Yeah, it's the sound design for that is great, and like you hear that all the way throughout the m- movie too. I wonder yeah. if they took like the foley artist, they just went and like took like a fucking pig or something, and just like actually grinded its like, like cut it and like grinded its face across something. Like, why would they pick a pig? I heard they just used your because you can't use a person. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Use a me- use a melon. <laughs> Grab a melon or a rubber. <laughs> baseball glove i don't know i did love the part where did somebody order a bitch (laughs) (laughs) i do love when he made his way through the entire nightclub and he gets in the alley and then uko comes out and is like oh shit this guy's still alive yeah and then he turns around and sees the assassin like nah it's fine this guy's gonna take him out for sure and he just slices and dices him Raptor yeah. claws. Yeah. The, is yeah. that what you would call those weapons? Yeah. I mean, I don't know the technical Haven't term. Haven't you watched Jurassic Park? Them. Yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, yeah. I'm sure there's some kind of crazy weapon that they're called, but yeah, I'll, we'll go with Raptor claws. So that's pretty, pretty spot on. All right, they're little kitty claws. Brutal. That's all it is. That reminded me. There's a scene in either Ong Bak one or two where like uh, Tony Ja is like fighting his way through like a fucking like, uh, like an archeological like museum or some shit. And he goes up and he like busts off some of these bones from one of the exhibits and he ties them to his elbows. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then he fights this big ass fucking gargantuan, like seven foot monster, like the mount picture of the mountain, you know, like from, game of thrones and he fucking goes and he slices him like he does all these crazy elbow twists and like gets him on his like knee like his elbow he's like hitting his achilles his fucking acl and all his ligaments and then this big old huge muscled out dude just flops like a jellyfish that (laughs) dude that seems so rad but yeah that remind that's another like this i really liked ong bak one and two are fucking really cool the, the fighting style of this Rama guy and Tony Jaw seem like they're really they're small little guys, but they're very fast and like mm-hmm. powerful uh, movements and stuff. So, yeah, uh, that, that by the way, we, we skipped over the uh, him punching the wall in prison. Oh, oh right. Shit. Extremely yeah. fast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was betting there was maybe a little bit of tweaking in there, like CGI or speeding up the film, maybe just in a couple little spots but maybe not fuck who knows yeah I it's, it's crazy there's... some triv on it I there is the um the weapon the guy uses is called a karambit k k a r m 
K-A-R-A-M-B-I-T or K-E-R-A-M-B-I-T. Those as two used little in raptor Indonesian. claws. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't Sweet. sound as cool. I'm sticking with raptor claws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, that part. So that that intros us to like the the main badass of the trifecta, this triumvirate of like special like mini boss tier or boss tier, let's say uh, mm-hmm. folks that are, that are stacked up against Rama. So the one, the first you have baseball boy who has a bat, bat boy and <laughs> hammer girl and who a ball. And you have a bat. hammer girl. Yeah. <laughs> and you have Raptor claw man. Who's also <laughs> like, fuck it. Like okay. Bruce Lee, like super highly skilled hand to hand dude that rivals Rama. Yeah. So it it doesn't specifically say about the the punching the wall scene, but it, the first bit of trivia says all the punches and kicks to the body of the actors were real. So I don't know if that uh, well, other I, fighters I, had I, to learn. I heard that when they were doing the choreography practices, that they would actually they had to work at actually making contact with each other, but not enough to actually hurt each other. So when they're actually kicking and punching, they're actually making contact in each, with each other in the movie. Damn. That sounds even harder to do than just like taking a punch and taking, like getting it right to that point and choking mm-hmm. it back. Like that sounds like super hard. I'm sure there was a lot of accidents and bruises <laughs> and oh, fucking yes. injuries. I'd, I'd like to see that. Like, like the the tail of the tape on how many people were like injured and well and one of the things I was reading was they were training for like weeks and months leading up to it with each other to avoid like when they're when they're doing the choreography if somebody punches somebody and it connects too much to avoid the other person getting pissed off and retaliating by punching too oh, hard really yeah Damn. they they like train together to try to uh avoid something like that which i thought was pretty cool that's gotta be really hard to avoid too over months long like you're getting to know people and like i mean these are people too so i'm sure there's like clicks and there's rivalries and and all kinds of more people want screen time and looking good on screen and stuff That, that sounds really hard to like corral all of that chaos like well i think the i think the point was kind of the opposite where it's like, let's get all these people together. Let's get them to know each other and like each other. So when we start doing these scenes, if somebody pops you by mistake, you're going to look at that person like, oh, that's that's a friend of mine, not somebody who I now want to beat the shit out of because I can't. Right. Yeah, that's a good point for sure. I, I was just reading the trivia that said that they trained together for like six months leading up to this. Damn. So that way they would have trust. Oh, damn. That's so long. <laughs> Well, yeah, because I mean, most <laughs> movies are like, uh, like some are they make movies in like thirty days, some are like ninety days, one hundred twenty days, you know. So yeah, that six is still months. that's something that I'm like finding out these days that kind of just shocks me. Like people can make movies so fast now. I'm sure they've always but, been able to, but yeah, I think it's this day and age. It's probably easier with like the more digital. Uh, yeah movies that can be made and you have like just like less um like mechanical shit to deal with so if like you're doing like a movie of in like rooms and of people and 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 more dialogue heavy those are the ones that are easier to crank out in like 10 15 20 days i've seen versus yeah anything any kind of action or like setup shots or cgi but yeah i bet it's like way easier not i mean there there is even a a film i think in like 2016 that was like famously by like steven soderbergh that they shot on i want to say like an iphone 6 or something like that that was it's i think it's called unsane it's actually a pretty good kind of like horror adjacent kind of like uh kidnapper thriller but anyway um yeah that is interesting like how like how far we've come and how quick they can churn stuff out but yeah, this is not one of those <laughs> like at all. So, uh, where the fuck are we at right now? We're at um, the three assassins uh, just got introduced, right? Okay. So, girl. <laughs> yeah. So let's go. Who was your favorite of these three? You're going hammer girl, Logan. Oh yeah. Steve. Yeah. I'm going to say hammer girl for sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> is that uh, a is it a unanimous the Hammer Girls the the baddest of these three? I I, I go with Hammer Girl as well. I mean, the baddest is no Raptor Claws is the baddest, but I mean Hammer Girl, you know, she's all right. I like I like the assassin's a uh, little cocky personality too. Yeah, Bat Boy. Yeah, she's cool. Yeah, no, not to the say assassin, that Bat Boy Raptor doesn't. Claws. Oh, Raptor Claws. Yeah, he, he yeah he does have a pretty cocky personality, especially in that final fight, which is a lot the of kitchen. Fun. Yeah, he he's the most proficient for sure. Yeah, but uh, I. I think my favorite scene in the entire movie was the hammer girl in the subway. Yeah. I mean, that was, yeah. Rad. That was just so fucking awesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> that part brought it back a little bit to, uh, um, old boy as well. Cause he uses a hammer to great effect, like brutal effect. Uh, yeah. and like, how many people he's like dealing with and how many people she deals with. I like the reveal later on that she was, that she's like blind or she had both of her eyes cut out. Oh, something like that. Yeah. Where they out. rip off her glasses and you can yeah. see that she's missing one or something like that. Yeah. Uh, at least, at least cool. one. Yeah. This scene was, was also, yeah. this is the one where I think at one point I looked up, I was like, this is kind of like the part in star Wars where they like order someone to kill all the Jedi's. Um, yeah. <laughs> speaking of Star Wars on this May 4th, may the 4th be with all of you. <laughs> Shut and up. also oh, with you. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this was this was basically the um, um, they went to the table, um, the Japanese and Beho. Uh, oh, yes. Or not Beho, the Japanese and um, Bungan. Yes, Uko's dad. Yeah, went to the table with Boss Daddy. Boss Daddy, the main, <laughs> the guy that runs both of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said, and he basically was like, no, you know what? You killed my guy, whatever. I'm not, I'm not, there's not going to be any retaliation, all that kind of stuff. Like, wasn't going to war. He was going to do anything that to not go to war, right? Mm-hmm. And he then, accepted so. responsibility for all the shit that had just hap- happened. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think that's when the, um, that's when Beho gave the order for the assassins to go take everyone out. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And much to Uko's chagrin, because he's like, fuck, I thought this was going to do it. Like, start the war yeah. with the with the uh, the Japanese clan. And then... No. No. Sorry. No, that that's a little later yet. He does... Um, what happens I got mixed is, up, too. What happens is... Uh, Uko is chewing out his dad for not retaliating. And then Right, right. After that, yeah, that yep. and that's when Uko's dad starts fucking bodying him. Then Uko calls Beho and is like, hey, uh, fuck the okay. Initiate yeah. order. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's when that happens. And then we also have this side character too, we haven't mentioned at all. His name is Echo or Eco. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the assistant okay. guy. I like yeah. I like this guy. Yeah. yeah I, I do, do too. too. I wish he would have had a little bit more play. He was also but one of the like other him. actors in uh Safe Haven there, Steven. Yes. Oh. Yeah. He was one of the main like one of those documentarians <laughs> like the 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 camera crew. The yeah. He was one of those one of those dudes. Yeah, I liked him a lot. And I, I, f- I wish they could have given him a little bit more to do there. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Ika, that's his name. Ika. Um, yeah, so he's like sitting on the sidelines. He's kind of in the same role as uh, Rama, only different. He's got a, a little bit more cushy, but he's still mm-hmm. got to walk a fine fucking line uh, watching all this kind of go down. Um, and then, so yeah, so Beho gives that order and we get our crazy badass assassins. I don't know. Should we get into this? The, I had a segment idea. Should we branch off here maybe and do round Robin on uh, what your favorite, or should we save it for the end? We do we'll right do now. it right now. Um, so I had a segment. I, I idea. If you were a gim- gimmick assassin, what would your shtick or weapon of choice be? Um, so it's a two-parter. What would you envision, and then what would be the reality? So, for example, I'll go first. So I thought um, 
my gimmick would be I would want like a reinforced like a like a rasp like a slightly beefy, beefier rasp, um, which is basically like a it's like a dull machete crossed with like a fine grit cheese grater, um, which would add insult to injury after you're being bludgeoned <laughs> with a fucking leaded cudgel, and then you get a section of sc- skin just like hamburgered off like Evil Dead Rises style. Have you guys seen that? Yes. Mm -hmm. I was about to say, don't talk about cheese graters right now. (laughs) I haven't seen it. Hashtag triggered. (laughs) Spoiler. Mini spoiler. Um, uh, But then, so, and then in reality, I'd be like burrito man with, with all different manner of like fusion style burritos at my disposal to incapacitate one with. So now you guys go. Hmm. Okay, so what I came up with is um, <laughs> you look so lost. <laughs> so what I came up with is um, in my head, I've got these like bad bitch saw blades that I just like throw like a frisbee, and they're just like cutting bitches up, right? <laughs> but in reality, they're just all of my vinyls. <laughs> it's just my vinyl collection that I've got. Sean Sh- of the Deadum. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'll shawn the denim. No, 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 not folklore. <laughs> Don't do that one. <laughs> no, Here, take swear. the Cardi B record. Take the Cardi B one. <laughs> That's awesome. Nice. Uh, Naderade or Thon, did you guys, I know I gave this uh, prompt kind of short notice. Did you guys have any anything you wanted to add? Thon, do you want to go first or you want me to go first? You, you can go first. I don't really have much. <laughs> All right. Well, I envision myself kind of like uh, a scorpion type guy. I'd, I'd have the, ku- the kunai, you know, uh, the n- big knife at the end of the rope. You know, you can use that mid, uh, mid-range yeah. attacks or close-up attacks like a shank. Um, but what it would be really be in real life is me in a bathrobe. Uh, with a yo-yo, just <laughs> flipping that shit around. <laughs> the bathrobe was a nice touch. <laughs> I not know where you're going with that one. Yeah. I know I was like, I, I'm nervous. <clears throat> I'm nervous. <laughs> I thought you were going to say a kunai with like a like a dong at the end of it, just like. <laughs> 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 thought it was going to be a Slim Jim for some reason. <laughs> you, guys, you, you guys are disgusting. <laughs> Get the head out of the gutter. <laughs> I didn't even mean it disgusting. I was just thought. <laughs> Here, have Take a, a snap on my slim Snap gym. into a slim gym. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve or, or Thon, did you guys have time to get one in? No, I don't. No. I mean, I could give no. you tips about getting away with actual murder, but. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think people want to hear Ooh. that. Oh, piece of delivery for robbery homicide. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, you'd just be like, I'd just shoot them with a gun. <laughs> All these people with knives and gimmicky, like, hand-to-hand weapons. You're dead. You're dying. Uh, I mean, one, of my, one of my favorite scenes was the uh, the motor, motorcyclist who came up behind the car who just got lit up with the machine gun. Oh, yeah. Right in his face. Yeah. Great like, kill. Yeah, that was awesome. I did like the car scene. Like some of those oh. crazy ass close quarters seatbelt fucking foo. Are you yeah. talking about the one where Rama like has to get into the front and he uses his hand to push the gas, or are we talking about yes. a different one? Yes. Yeah, that, that whole one. all of that. That because whole... he starts out in the back seat and he has to like fight his way through to the front and like. Oh man, yeah. Well, that's another because... one where they had tension building because he was sitting there and it was kind of in slow motion, and then the mm. phone his phone rang and they reached out to see who it was and it was it was Echo. <laughs> No, yeah. we're talking about the one before that, right? Where it's the cops going after uh, Rama, and then they break into that uh, restaurant oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. the dude's face. Oh yeah. shit! Oh, yeah, yeah. That yeah. Or, oh, that yeah. was such a, that was, that was a great kill. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, that was There's so many good, good action scenes. They I'm all go to together. Put that on my list. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, that, and then that's when, um, then that's when uh, Ucho has his big moment with his boss daddy. What the yeah. fuck did you just say to me? I just spaced out so hard. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, what yes. you after just the said. <laughs> after the big, so it's like a big. Um, you have the baseball bat guy, yes, baseball boy okay. has his fight scene. It's also interspliced with Hammer Girl on the train. And the police uh, yeah. chase because that's the whole execute order six. So all these different action scenes are going on at the same time. Right. They're yeah. cutting back and forth between. And when them. he blasted that dude on the hibachi, that's when he yeah. saw the police yeah. ID mm-hmm. tag. That's yeah. right. Oh, fuck man, yeah. I didn't really like the baseball guys. The whole "give me the ball back" shtick. Oh, dude, bad, there's no bad way. Decision. I was a baseball care. fan. No chance you could do that. Exactly. No. Exactly. Never. I don't never. care how good you are at baseball. You can never hit the ball right at a guy's head like that. No. On purpose. Yeah. I was along for the ride. I didn't give a fuck that it was unbelievable. I was having a good fucking <laughs> time. So, so first of all, he yes, I think if they did not see him standing there, I think he could absolutely hit a ball at the dude's at the first dude's head. I don't think he could have got the second one while the dude was Wrong. moving at all. Wrong. But I think I think lining it up, he could hit a line drive directly at the dude's head. Wrong. <laughs> he would have hit it maybe an ankle, but not right at his head. Well, if he can hit the ankle, why can't he hit the head? You can because he's not aiming for the ankle. Pro, you, you can you can hit a ball <laughs> in an in a direction that you want the ball to go. People do that all the time. That's what that's people do that all the time. That's with other people pitching to them. Well, major league baseball players do, but not. Yeah. So he could he he could have that. He could have the same talent. He's pitching to himself. He's not throwing it 90 miles an hour at himself. He's he's putting the ball where he wants to hit it and hitting it in the direction he wants to hit it. Totally. <laughs> what you score on your marksmanship evaluation? 17. <laughs> 14. <laughs> Yeah, just maybe the first one guy. out of he ten. Couldn't hit the maybe second one, one out of ten. I wouldn't say like every one, time. One out of a thousand. Okay, well, okay. our man got fucking lucky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was along for the ride too. I just thought it was. I was fine with it. I yeah. just. I thought it was corny. Like he, he had to have a little. Give me the ball back. Give me my like, ball. Was back. definitely corny. I Give did me my not. ball back. I'm going home. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to play. Didn't with you say anymore. like? You're gonna regret that or something like that, like something on. like that. Yeah, you shouldn't have done that. It's like you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna <laughs> die either way. Your head so. shank. Yeah, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> That's the way it sounded. It sounded like you should have had that. You shouldn't have done that. Go to bed, you, you sons of bitches. <laughs> uh, so is this where we kind of we close in on? It's it's back at Beho's lair, where we get the. Uh, let me know if we're skipping anything, but we get we're, like kind of the full reveal to Uko of what's going on, and then this the, is, or, this or the is fight, the major Daddy's, fight scenes. We're at Boss Daddy's um, office now, and then. Uh, oh right, 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 right. Yes, where we get him, th- it, where his son shoots him through the fucking cheek. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> that shit hurted. Yeah, that was pretty brutal. And Dude, many more is, ways this, than one. Like, like if yeah. you didn't think this character was pathetic enough, he looks away yeah. when he shoots his dad, and it's like, yeah. oh fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. And, any. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no. I'll, I'll get to this later because it kind of. Uh, it, it. We'll get to it later. Any kind of redemption he could have had went out the window at that point. With yeah, because also. Before he shoots him, he like reveals to his father that he's working against him, right? Because he brings in like Beho's whole squad. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Yeah. it was shit's me. It's not looking good. Yeah. Yeah, that whole like, yeah, it was me. And I just wanted to see the look on your face. But it's well, like, yeah, and he says, forgive me, which is an admission of like, yeah, fuck, I did this. Yeah. And I'm about and to shoot you in the face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty I do love funny. how the dad was giving him a beating beforehand. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, he was he, slapping the shit out of him. He was. He was giving him that daddy damage for sure. No, dad, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I did like this part because Rama kind of runs in. He's like, yo, what the fuck is going on? And then he shoots, you know, boss daddy. And then Echo's Echo, whatever, is kind of chilling. They're like, what the fuck? And then Rama, yeah, like, helps him out. <laughs> yeah, that's got to be a shitty yeah. situation for Echo, like, seeing, like, oh, shit, like... Cause I was fa- I was loyal to your dad. Uh, are you gonna give me a shot, or are you just gonna fucking blow me away now? You know, like that's one of those fifty fifties. Like, well, it's not him. just that, but he, uh, Rama is witnessing that uh, what's the name has teamed up with the guy who killed his brother too. So right, yeah, yeah. The whole Fish. reason he's in this, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So stakes are super high right now, and then. And then is this where we we go back to Bejo's club, and that's the, where we encounter we get the baddies. The, the there's the other car chase scene. Oh right, right in that sh- that like ninety eight blazer. That's where the dude gets in front of the motorcycle gets a machine gun to the face. I right. love yes. this car scene so much. Like Thirty seven rounds. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, the one where he, that's the one where they 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 see the phone call. They see it's Eka. And then you see him come up behind in the back to ram him. And as soon as he rams him, rams him, the shit goes down. Yeah. I, as much as I did like the scene, I think they, they could have cut down on the, cause I feel like he was in that back seat playing Are we all good? seat belt foo for a long fucking time, oh. but mm-hmm. they could have tightened that up a little bit. I feel like, but <laughs> then we, then we get into our final like showdown, I guess area. Um, where it's like the main bad guy or crew isn't like the main threat. It's like these like three underbosses of the baseball boy, hammer girl and uh, Raptor claw man. Yep. Um, and he just, he's fighting up the chain and well, he kind of takes, it, it seems like maybe baseball boy and hammer girl are either lovers or related I'm siblings or? for some reason. I was I thinking think they siblings. were siblings. Okay. Yeah, I thought so too. But they have a close relationship, and I, I kind of like right. that dynamic between them. Right, and it's brutal too, because and it, I think most of it comes out when Hammer Girl, like she loses her her glasses. You see, she's all fucked up, and Rama <laughs> dispatches her, and then that, and then Baseball Boy's like, no, like oh fuck, you know, like, and that so the mouth. <laughs> yeah, that that was pretty cool. I because mm-hmm. it it made it. It didn't like Rama wasn't overpowering. It was like a good mix of like back and forth, you know, like just ass beating. Like, um, yeah, that was cool shit. They beat the whole ass too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> both cheeks, double cheeks. <laughs> uh, and then, then then it moves into like the kitchen area, which is a fun battleground. Uh, <laughs> especially these two, these hand to hand guys, and like. So it's it's Raptor Claw Man and uh, Rama just fucking putting on a clinic, the and whole it does crew the, walks literally. Out. <laughs> yeah, dude. Because like but, I like the way that you see them squaring up and Raptor Claw guy. I know we said that this is where he's getting cocky, but I also think that he's just like genuinely enjoying that he's finally fighting like oh fuck yeah a worthy yeah. Appoint, a, appointment opponent opponent. <laughs> um, yeah. So like he's having a really good time until he's not, and that's when the claws come out. Yeah, right, exactly. It's like he knows he has like a fifty-one or a fifty-two percent edge. Like no matter what, I yeah. I got that I got that little bit over this guy, so I can maybe toy with him. Or but he's mm-hmm. still gonna be yeah like a badass challenge. But then once it gets to, like maybe halfway through or so, when he starts getting cut and he starts getting progressively like roughed up back by Rama. It, that that you see that kind of cockiness and it turns to like the desperation and and like oh you're getting fucked up now and like Rama's turning the tide. Yeah. Yeah, because I think that's another thing like watching this around the second time is it's kind of like which you know every single one of these battles they're having is is a fight to the death. So like the loser you're not going to the hospital after this, you're going to the morgue. So like at first he's getting cocky and you're watching and at first you're kind of like oh that's funny he's having fun and then you're like Oh wait, he literally just thinks he's not going to die at the end of this. <laughs> yeah. They're Yeah. 
I Go really ahead, like this scene. I think it's one of one of my favorite like fight action scenes. I think I like it a lot because it kind of reminds me like a video game you're playing. Because I think there's like three rounds in this big long fight scene. Yeah. It, it definitely like and even like the music changes for each like little scene. The, it's all one continuous fight, but it's like they have the first little square up back and forth fighting for a while. And then the claws come out and then that's the next one. He's kind of winning that one. And then right. uh, and then it goes to the final the final bit where Rama gets a claw from him and everything. And it kind of evens it up. I like that whole setup, how they did that. So I remember watching the first one and I was going to ask you guys if it was based off of a video game because it, it feels like throughout this whole, you know, and I, I know they do this with movies too, but it felt like he was going through boss levels, you know? And so like it's the same thing in the second, in the second one here, he goes up against, you know, like hammer girl and bat guy at the same time. And then he goes into, you know, final, not final boss mode, technically final boss mode, I guess. Cause I think this is like the last big, true combat scene that he has right yeah. um yeah and i don't know anyway long story short i i, I can piggyback off that sentiment that it felt like he was in a video game yeah i thought the same thing yeah yeah that's a good uh good analogy for sure i liked all the like the, the environmental stuff that they were going back and forth on and like like just like the different uh like the moves, not not just like the combat, but like navigating that uh, that kitchen arena was super cool. I love how the kitchen staff was in there whenever Rama bursts in. He's all bloody and disgusting, and the kitchen staff just like looks at him and they look <laughs> at Razor Claw guy and they're like, "Fuck this shit!" And yeah. they all just like get out. <laughs> yeah, smoke break. Yeah, I, 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 I saw Sorry, a piece of trivia ahead. that said that that kitchen fight scene took. Eight whole days to film. Holy shit. <laughs> That's insane. Damn. Yeah. It's Worth so well, I believe it. That the continuity is like, I feel like with this and like the prison fight scene, like the continuity, you don't really notice a whole lot of breaks in, you know, there's like yeah. one part during this last scene where you can tell that like Rama was just standing still and then you see the razor claw like hit him in the face. I was kind of like, oh. But, like, other than that, the rest of it is just so, like, tight. Mm-hmm. Now, Steve, I got a question for you. Yeah. I was listening to your, well, I listened to part of your Skyfall episode today. Yeah. And you mentioned something like uh, that hand-in-hand -hand combat scenes aren't your taste because you're, like... Uh, these two guys would be so tired from this or whatever, like it'd never go on for this long. Uh -huh. So how did, how did this one hold up for you? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> 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 I, I mean, there's, there's a certain level of like a suspension of disbelief. And yeah, by the end of this one, I was like, God damn, there is no way this guy still has energy left. Yeah. Especially when he gets to the final, room mm -hmm. after he's been cut six ways to Sunday about to die. <laughs> and then he gets to the last room and is somehow reinvigorated. So, yeah. Well, I mean, you're seeing the guy, I don't know. You're seeing the guy that just killed your fucking brother, like in cold blood. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's like, you're you're going into it. I, I I guess I could see the difference between a Bond because he's more, he's more than a hand to hand fighter. You know, he's like at the espionage angle. He's got to be able to fucking drive. He's got to be able to like shoot well and all these different things. Whereas, like Rama, it's like that's his shit. Is like, you know, being like an enforcer and he knows how to use a gun too. But I don't know. Just that is a good question, but and I, I wonder yeah. that too. I wondered a couple of times, like, fuck, he's just got to be beat, but uh, not as in like a bond because he's like doing like these huge high falls and going into a car, and then like I don't know, just a little bit different, I suppose. But yeah, that is a good question because I didn't really question it in this movie, like while I was watching it, like, yeah, I how didn't does he either. Have all the energy, I was just like, this is just bad as fuck, and this is just how he runs, you know, like. <laughs> I was kind of expecting love... him to die at the end. Like I thought he was going to bleed out, and that was how it was going to end. Yeah, this is kind of a weird ending for a film like this, but 
I guess cutting right to it, I I liked this ending of like the you don't know what the fuck's gonna happen. Like, is there gonna be some kind of truce or like armistice, and they're just baiting you with that, or is he just gonna fucking go out in a blaze of glory, or is he just gonna give up and follow his knees and they cut his head off? You know, you don't know. I, I like well, that uncertainty. I saw, um, I'm sure, I, it sounds like Steve and I are kind of reading off the same trivia. It looked like the director had plans for a third movie and uh, then definitely. wanted to hop into other projects. And then eventually he was kind of like, eh, I think I think it's fine. <laughs> oh, really? I like to believe There's that he said. There's definitely going to be a third one. I like to oh, believe wow. that he said, I'm done. And the Japanese guys were like, okay. And then they made their merry ways <laughs> off. I know that's probably not what happened, but... <laughs> <laughs> that's how I imagine it, it. Yeah. <laughs> in I, my I kinda, fantasy. I, I kind of think that is what happened. I think they just left Rama alone because Rama pretty much killed off their the Japanese competition. That's so. what I thought too. Yeah. Oh, you got a problem. Yay. Solve it. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Well, also because he says I'm it. done. It's like I'm done killing all those motherfuckers. Um, but we did kind of skip past one important reveal that we did kind of allude to earlier. Yes. And that's when Uko sees the tattoo on Bay's wrist. Yeah. Yeah, that is a very, we can't skip over that. Good good call. That made me, I clutched my pearls. I was like, <clears throat> oh! it was so good. Yeah, but what what does it mean? That mean so so that means that Uko realized that oh this is the dude that put all those guys in prison to assassinate me. He was trying to have me killed in prison, right. and then he took his own guys and had me kill all of his own guys, so he can keep to, a secret to, and everything. Right, and to also he used him as like a pawn. Yeah, he kind of steered him like art of war style against his own father to break out this this uh, war that he wanted to start for so, financial. All kinds of reasons. Yeah. So Territory. right. Territory. Yeah. Yeah. So right after that too, because he sees the tattoo and he realizes, oh, this motherfucker just set me up, like in prison, and this whole time he's been playing me. Yeah. Right after he got that, me to kill my own dad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then right after that, the dude, the main other boss dude or whatever, looks at him as like, "What are you gonna do, sidekick?" And like yeah. that set him off. He was like, "I'm still a sidekick. I killed my dad, and I'm still a sidekick." Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So that's why when he snatched the shotgun and turned around and blasted the other dude in the face. Are you still a little confused, Steve? Well, then why did he try to kill Rama at the end? Because that's it. That's his boy, right? Mm. I don't know. I, I, I was kind of wondering that too, but I think yeah, it was I'm, just like he was so far gone. He'd killed his dad. Like yeah. he's just like, fuck everything well, mode. Maybe I, I don't know. I, I think yeah. he knew that Rama was coming in to end everything. And he had already he was already up against him. They were already up against each other mm-hmm. when he killed his dad. That's yeah. true. Okay. Yeah. Right. Like well, he also like, he, he yeah. well also like Rama is technically I guess no longer in his employment. And on top of that, he was like a huge douchebag like in front of Rama like so many points. I feel like I would know that I wasn't going to be redeemed in Rama's eyes either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's hmm. a good point. How about those yeah, two shotgun where, to the face kills, though? Yeah, Dude, was really, that was gnarly. So yeah, that looked pretty real. I, so I for, I for, I've seen this movie a few times, and I forgot about that. So that kind of shocked me when I saw this again. Doesn't Beho he he gets it first, like to the fucking right neck, here, yeah, sh- mm-hmm. neck shoulder. That was brutal. Ugh. I will say, and, and like y'all kind of heard this real time too. I was kind of like, wait, that's it. Because I was like expecting, you know, I was like, oh, you know, Razor Claw dude was like the pre-boss belt battle. But then like I was, I, I it kind of like dawned on me that like Uko doesn't fight. <laughs> yeah, like he right. sends everyone else out to do that for him. He's a baby back bitch. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a baby gangster. <laughs> I got the fries that are across your eyes. Uh, yeah, that's where it's kind of like the... I kind of like these setups where it's like the anticlimactic, like you kind of like you upshift and like we get into like his final test and then you downshift into like the boss who is just like a puppeteer and like the, the threat's really over. It's just kind of kind of sends you out to the end of this flick because his well, main. I liked when Uko found the uh, wire or transponder. I don't oh, know. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. In his wallet. Yeah. And dumped it on dead guy. 
like, uh, that's not who did that, but all right, <laughs> go ahead. Chase, <laughs> what the fuck were you thinking here? Chase. <laughs> I felt so bad for the paper towel boy Jeez. in the bathroom. What the fuck were you thinking about? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> stuck on you. <laughs> you feel bad for who? I felt bad for the paper towel boy in the bathroom when. <laughs> yeah, that was rude. <laughs> It'd go, you better come over here if you want your tip. And he like tosses the <laughs> paper towel out of his hands. <laughs> Poor fella. All well, right. I, I, another piece of trivia I saw was the total body count was 327. Good lord. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. That's a lot. I'd like after to that, see a kill after count. That was the prison. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that's insane. Everybody got got. I feel like that's like uh, I feel like that's got to be more than um, like Django. I know a lot of people get killed in Django. Like Rambo had the record for a long time. Yeah, Rambo: First Blood Part Two or or the third one. One of them had the record for a long time. Hmm. Actually, I think the new the two thousand six Rambo had. I think took it too. I never saw that, but I heard it was pretty bad dude there's like a five minute scene where he's behind the the behind a 50 caliber just mowing people down (laughs) (laughs) dude it's so funny my mother-in-law is like this sweet older gal and she loves action movies like that like fucking like she has the same movie taste as like steve like she likes nick cage movies and fucking like the expendables three and shit Oh, you've not she seen a, she's a person of refined taste yeah <laughs> you've not seen the 2006 rambo uh uh-uh. oh it's That's worth it ass. just for that 50 caliber scene he starts okay. off it's one of the ones hooked up on onto the back of a jeep uh-huh. he starts off hijacking it from behind and then pointing it right at the driver in front of him and just exploding yeah. him <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> so i like there's a photo of that where they take the 50 cal out, out of the photo. They oh, yeah. The photo oh, shot where he's the just fo- got the thumbs up. He's, yeah. thumbs up. he's got the thumbs That's up. That's hilarious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> where he's like, yeah. 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 <laughs> I've seen that meme. <laughs> it's so didn't, they, didn't he do another Rambo, like a, like a reboot yeah. after that? Or was that it? Last, Blood. Uh, Last, Last Blood. Blood. I haven't seen that one, though. It's, it's all right. It's it, just for the action sequence at the end. It's okay. The rest of it's long and drawn out and pointless. All right. All right. Can, uh, I, can so I read two shitty reviews? Or... Please do. All mm-hmm. right. These people don't know how to fight. <laughs> <laughs> this movie was I'm boring. Sure. Yeah, I'm sure that's a, a critique no, like for the sure. The love story didn't pay off. Like we discussed earlier. <laughs> 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 A lot of these came from really <laughs> dumb Amazon reviews. So the first one is from a guy named Ian. I'll, I'll keep his last name private. One out of five stars. The title of his review is Amazon's Dubbing Betrayal. <laughs> yeah, it says, I love this movie. Saw it in the theater and bought it to cherish. And then, in all caps, after the purchase, Amazon ruined it by substituting this miserable dubbing version. No explanation or options. Genuinely sad and angry that I bought this. Got what I wanted and was betrayed with a bad swap and no choices. So that happened to me once whenever Diego and I bought the... um boruto movie which is like the naruto spinoff we just wanted to watch the movie and we didn't think about it when we bought it on amazon and we bought the american dub and it's so bad it sounds like that guy needs to move on his parents basement yeah well if you'd like that i've got one more that's funny (laughs) um this is from eric one out of five stars you're gonna give the company to eric (laughs) 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 sorry daddy uh, yeah. <laughs> the title title of his review is Know What You're Buying and I hope you like Chinese 
because that's all you're going to hear. Wow. <laughs> His wow. review, it's as follows. Very, very, very disappointed. It's not Three even berries. in English. And the subtitle is so bad, I couldn't get past the first 20 minutes. This movie is the worst movie I've seen in my entire life. Not only is it in the wrong language, but the acting spelled wrong, and the scenes are very low budget. If I could give it negative five stars, I would. <laughs> I love when they always have to clarify if I could give it the and yeah. then whatever the low whatever the, in their mind is the lowest thing that they could give it. Tar and feather them. Death That's penalty. fucked up, man. <laughs> In the criminal it's, justice system. <laughs> yeah. It's in the wrong language. Book them. <laughs> in this house. Yeah. <laughs> in this house. Jesus. Uh, yeah, what What language were you expecting, bucko? Um, <laughs> it did right. take me a minute. Whenever I was watching the first one, I was like, it like occurred to me. I was like, "Oh wait!" I was like, "This isn't an American film because it's called The Raid." So like, and I know that I'm sure it has maybe just a. This is like the American ver like name of whatever the actual name of the movie is. But there was a minute where I was like, "Oh shit! This is an Indonesian film." Yeah, I haven't seen any Indo Indonesian like cinema. I don't know how big it is, but I, this is got to be the only one I've ever seen uh, from that country. And I was thinking about it too. That's like a country I don't really think about when I think about Southeast Asia. I think about automatically like Thailand, like Singapore, China, Hong Kong, Taiwan. Indonesia is one that you never really think about. But like yeah. the geography of which is fucking crazy too. Like how it's like so spread out and like island, Even but not. Malaysia. Yeah. That one too, for sure. This director, uh, um, I'm I'm honestly surprised that uh, after these first two raid movies, <clears throat> that like Hollywood hasn't come knocking on his door and have him like punching out a bunch of action movies for them or anything like that. Because so I think it would be really really cool if uh, the producers for like the John Wick movies or Violent Night and all those, Ooh. if they yeah. hired him to direct one of their movies, because I think that would be pretty sweet. Yeah, you would. Th it, it to me, it makes me think that this guy's kind of like a cavalier, or, or maybe just like wants to do it himself, kind of guy. Because mm -hmm. why? You're right. Why? Why hasn't he been? You know. Uh, given all kinds of uh, leeway to make something or, or been tapped for other projects because uh, yeah, I mean this shit, it, it is awesome and it, it flies under the radar too. Cause I haven't heard of it uh, before you guys had mentioned it. So, um, but it's still like after getting into it, it seems like it's got a pretty big following and it, it lends credence to that, that idea. Like he, he must just like want to do his own projects and like, Maybe he maybe he wants more control than like a a bigger studio is willing to give him, but that's interesting. Well, why? I don't know if you know the show. I don't. I haven't watched it. I've heard it's really good. Heard heard good things. He does the show um, Gangs of London. He created that. Oh, okay. I've I've heard good things. My my mother in law watches stuff like that, uh, but I haven't seen it. I wonder if it's up there with like a like a Peaky Blinders type show or something. Ooh. I haven't watched it. It does actually star one of the guys in Peaky Blinders in it, I know. Um, and it looks like I'm actually looking at Gareth Evans' uh, MDW, in IMDb page. MDW. MDW. <laughs> um, he's got a movie coming out this year, it looks like. Uh, it's called Havoc. And it's actually uh, starring Tom Hardy and... Uh, Timothy Oliphant. Oh, wow. Ooh. That's right. I'm super excited about that. I forgot all about it. I like both of those. I'm a big Tom Hardy stan. In. Oh, it's a love story. Oh. Yes. 
No, I'm kidding. It's an actual story. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> it's a love story, apparently, between Tom Hardy and Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> <laughs> Forrest All here Whitaker. for the gay fan fiction. <laughs> Forrest Whitaker and the GI. <laughs> just been revoked <laughs> <laughs> so this is a uh this is a win for you steve yeah in the win column yes yep. yep yeah so thank you to the the ghoulish uni crew this ups our average to from a 84.2 percent to an 84.6 we'll take it steve steve are you gonna watch the first one yeah yeah Oh yeah. Big recommend, big love. Honestly, I can see both of these two movies being all timers for me. Like I feel like these are ones that I would easily rewatch. Mm-hmm. You know, just in the background. Yeah, they're definitely fun. Yeah, this is definitely anyone that uh is into like an action movie or even a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely worth your time. I enjoyed myself. I thought it could have been a little bit tighter. And if I'm giving it any digs, probably it was uh, me overhyping it in my mind too. But I mean, the action scenes uh, when they, when they do come on, I think all of them deliver. I don't think any, any one of the major action set pieces didn't uh, uh, have me enthralled or I didn't enjoy. So yeah, this was, this is a fun one to check out too. I'm excited to watch the first one as well. Um, you guys have mentioned if, you, if you're fans of this, uh, there's another one starring the guy who played Rama headshot. I, I saw that on Netflix is out. There's a, it's coming out. Yeah. Yeah. It's already out. It's been out on Netflix for, for a while now too. It's there's, oh, there's okay. three of them on Netflix. Um, and the, oh, the raid, the raid two are both on Netflix and the other three um, headshot. The night comes for us. And I just had the other one up, and now it's gone. Well, I know what I'm doing this weekend. <laughs> you said uh, you said headshot is pretty good there, Thon? Yeah. Okay. Sweet. I think I like The Night Comes For Us more than Headshot, but Headshot's right there. I, I love The Night Comes For Us. I, I've heard you say that quite a bit. Where do you put that against any, either of the raids, Nate or Aid? Um, I'll put it below the raids, but it's definitely more violent, like oh, okay. more gross kills and everything, but it's still pretty okay. freaking sweet. And, and question. there's, I think you'll need more suspension of disbelief as far yeah. as if you're talking about the endurance and things like that. Yep. There's okay. one guy in particular that's just like, there's no way this guy's still standing. <laughs> <laughs> Word. Now, how is how is Rama's hair looking in these other two movies? Is it shaved or is it? It's unshaved. You'd love it. <laughs> Count me in. Was it bald or was it tall? <laughs> that's a friend's deep cut. Um <laughs> Super deep cut. Uh, so uh, we had mentioned co- colloquial corner. Do, do any of you have uh, a colloquialism? Nate, you said remind you or Thon remind I, you. I do. I have one. Okay. We can we can touch on it real quick. Yeah. For oh, sure. boy. And then and Logan, then Logan, Logan can you help say you this. might have one too. I have one that hopefully y'all haven't talked about yet. Okay. Here. Here comes. <laughs> The Colonial Corner. I feel like I'm about to start playing laser tag. I'm sorry, it's a long bump. I feel like I'm like geared up and ready to go into laser tag though. I, I'm so I made sorry it. to talk over. No, it's it's all good. I made it even longer to be like absurd or like ridiculous. And I played it one time. It was like 21 seconds. That was nine. That was nine seconds, and it was like ridiculously too fucking long. So I was like, Jesus, that's full on morning zoo. Yeah, it, it really was. Um, which uh, which of you two want to go first? I can go first because mine's like a quick one. Um, this is where we talk about like parlance that people say that we hate, right. Or just in general, it can be, it can be anything that you hate. You could love it. 
something that you're on, you're jocking right now? Oh, I have no Anything. doubt I'll hate it all. Yeah. So I know that I like whenever you say something slaps. You know, like whenever a new song comes out, you're like, man, this song fucking slaps. But sometimes people will say, oh, you know what? This smacks. And it's different. They use it for like the same thing. But I hate when it smacks because it just it's one of, it's like, you know how people hate the word moist? That's me with the word smack. But slap <laughs> is in. No, they both suck. <laughs> Dude, yeah. right when you mentioned slapper, Nader was like shaking his head. He's no. shaking his head. <laughs> Fuck Nate's it's, always shaking his head that's, at me that's though. Just, that's just as bad as oh, this is lit or this is I fire. Knew it. I was like, he's <laughs> gonna say he hates. It's lit, fam. Oh, I'm gonna dab now. <laughs> this, this track is fire, yo. <laughs> slaps, slaps, smacks is cheeks. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I, I'm okay with slaps. I try to filter it in because I I, want, I don't want to keep overusing banger. Banger is probably my favorite, and I yep. I'll, I I try to limit myself to using slaps to music because I think that's where I originated. Mm-hmm. A slapper that's slap like when you have subs in your trunk and you have something with a lot of bass. It's a slapper. It's slapping your fucking car. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've also I've tried to incorp- incorporate lately smacker like this is a fucking smacker dude we are old (laughs) (laughs) so so speaking of old that brings us speaking of old that brings us right to uh right to my colloquial (laughs) corner here yeah because we are going to be some old men yelling at clouds and logan can help uh explain us through here yeah so my colloquial corner that i can't stand and you heard it a lot probably this last week at the Met Gala, if any of you watched any coverage of that or heard anyone talking about it, is when someone says something's giving. <laughs> Get that shit Do out of here. Think? It's not a complete sentence. Yeah, they said, oh, she's giving or whatever. That's it. I think it drives I think me crazy. Specifically, oh. I posted Pedro Pascal's Met Gala look in the Slack and I said, but Pedro Pascal was giving though. And I think Hydra came in and he was like, giving what? <laughs> Or it may have been you, Thon. It may have even been you, but someone said, like, what is he giving? It wasn't I was me, because like, uh, I know what, I know, I'd heard it before that, and I was just like, nah, I'm not, I'm not with this it, one. It was Hydra, and I agree, it's a terrible <laughs> saying. Stop using it. it, it so it's, it came from people saying, oh, it's giving me life. Uh, but now, like, you, people just shortened it from, oh, this oh, is giving me life, God. to, oh, it's giving. You know, like, we're always shortening shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That one drives me crazy in particular. It's not a full sentence. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> not you in okay. particular, just me like in general. Uh, no, no, oh. no. I know you're not calling me out. It's but I am guilty. <laughs> Why well, no? You're of you're of an age, you know. It is. And you know it's, uh, it's <laughs> not like I'm not, you know, with it, you know. <laughs> I don't <laughs> But they don't changed like what it, it was. <laughs> now, yeah. now what what I'm with isn't See, it. You're an elder millennial. I am a cusper. I'm still a millennial, but I'm not an elder millennial. It'll happen to you. It will happen to me, and it is happening to me at certain points, but I understand <laughs> you elders. <laughs> I don't have such a problem with giving, but knowing that it's just a shortening of this is giving me life, like, I don't like that at all. And. Let's be clear. I'm not the end all be all of what it actually means. That's just my interpretation of it. That's what I think it means. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's shortened for whatever they mean at that time. It doesn't mean like giving me life, but they just say it's giving. And I've heard people like expound on it and they give different variations of it's giving whatever kind of vibes that they are talking about. Infuriating. This yeah. conversation is giving me a headache. <laughs> <laughs> no, Grandma, I didn't get it. I'm sorry, Mom. I just hate him. I hate him. I hate him. Yeah. I do not abide everything that just was spoken. About. I do not allow I it. I feel like. I feel like I'm breaking so much etiquette by laughing over y'all's bumps, but I cannot help it. Oh, that's awesome. 
Yeah, I I don't like giving. That's that's not cool. But what about Smacker? We're not we're not on board. I I can't sign off on it. I have to sit. Okay. I'll, I'll let you know tomorrow. <laughs> All right, fair enough. One, I guess one too that that you had just mentioned. I've I haven't heard anywhere in the wild, but I've heard you Thon uh, when you're uh, mentioning something uh, in a derogatory nature or that you don't like or that is garbage, referencing it as cheeks. I like cheeks. That. I'm pretty into that. I don't know if I can really pull it off. I need to. I need to fine tune it. So cheeks is a bad thing. Yeah. Like yeah, booty cheeks. cheeks. Yeah. yeah, booty you cheeks. You heard people people talk about like, oh, that's booty, son. No, it's cheeks. <laughs> yeah. I think that's cheeks. very cute. <laughs> One that I still see and it still annoys me is the whole and I have no I, I have no doubt you guys brought it up already, was is the uh I was today years old. Oh, yeah. Sort of deal, dude. Yeah, before before you said that, I already knew whatever he's about to say. <laughs> I'm going to agree with him one thousand. <laughs> I just the worst. I knew it. And yeah, you're right. God, that shit. I think the way the cameras are split here, you guys, you and Naderade have the same kind of vibe like, uh-huh. about that kind of stuff. Whereas I feel like us three, me, Logan, and Thon are a little bit more okay and willing to like give that kind of shit a chance you just both of you are full get the fuck off my lawn get you know. off my motherfucking lawn yeah. you can <laughs> i'm the it. person who will i'll use it. it ironically until it suddenly just becomes a part of my personality like <laughs> i think y'all i think you guys have seen it i say d's nuts and yo mama like all the time well just and wait. y'all think that just wait till you have some annoying kid on your fucking lawn and then come back and then, come back. And then front Here's, kick him right in the chest yeah. <laughs> just, just so spray him with the hose kicked him. just spray him with the hose, hose. like yeah. I did Logan, I, Logan's like, getting Stockholm Syndrome from her from her catchphrases like from her slang <laughs> no, she's like I'm gonna, I'm gonna use them like, ironically and then they just take hold of her yeah. Now, one that I will never let go of that I have always loved that was yeet. Yeet. You know, whenever you throw no, something, that's, you that's yeet still it. Dumb. Yeah. That's still so dumb. Did you guys talk about receipts on here not too long ago? What yeah, the fuck? Steve it's receipts. Okay. It's a piece of paper. I thought y'all did. Because I said, I referenced that like not too, I was like, yeah, he brought the receipts. I was like, oh shit. I think I'm just triggering them right now. <laughs> I don't mind receipts. <laughs> <laughs> I think receipts is funny because it's proof. I brought yeah. the proof. Just oh, say so proof stupid. then. I'm already getting, I'm <laughs> getting a love headache of God. <laughs> are you or are you not the black angel of death? I thought you were going to get a Statler and Waldorf bump because that's what we got down here below us. <laughs> 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 Boo! <laughs> Except they're not as funny. (laughs) Sick burn. All right. Well, I guess we don't want to add how many how many more Advils Naderade's got to take to before he goes to bed. Dude, I just I just bought myself like a seventy five foot long hose, so no kids are going to be on my lawn anytime (laughs) soon. This isn't creep yourself, Naderade. Wrong show. First of all, you're doing it wrong. If you have that, if you need that long of a hose, that means you're chasing them around or something. Like, why do you need that long of a hose? If you're doing it right, you should be able to do it from your porch without getting up and be able to spray them. Like, you're not chasing them. Do less work, man. Who knows? Naderade doesn't have game. (laughs) Shut the fuck up, Logan. (laughs) Riz. God yeah. damn it! Like, it's a training hose. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta go out there with your go out there with your pressure washer. <laughs> oh, there you go. Cut a fucking. I just on used one the other day. Put it on the fine no. the finest tip that you have. Oh yeah, <laughs> they won't come back. No. <laughs> Unrelated, but Nate has started sending videos of himself doing his yard work to us on Snapchat, and it's like the highlight of my weekends. I'm just watching Nate like 
leaf blow his yard. <laughs> it's Dude, fun. Uh, full disclosure that uh, that one that you uh, that clip that you sent to the Slack channel for Straight Chilling where you sang the intro song, I ripped that and I shared it on a Google Drive link with Steve. I was like, yeah. look at Naderade right now. <laughs> that shit was, dude, that shit fucking, that shit gives me Do you remember life. what I wrote back? So I, I do a Would lot you, of... He's like, this looks like the first conversation of like no, a serial killer. No, this looks like something you would find on a serial killer's phone after yeah. the fact. <laughs> <laughs> It's mic, a, <laughs> you, you see that video and you swipe to the next thing and it's his manifesto. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can't Jeez. say there were no red flags. <laughs> <laughs> Write my manifesto with me. Oh, man. Right next to the fanfic. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Uh, so yeah, that's been it for the raid deuce. Um, yeah, it was a good time. I appreciate you guys making the time, uh, coming on and rapping with us and introducing us to the film. Um, I'll definitely be checking out, uh, the night comes for us next. I think that's the one I want to check off after the first raid, of course. Um, uh, you guys have any final comments, anything else about this flick before we wrap it up? Going Not once, about the flicks, twice. but I do want to thank you guys for having us on. It has been such a blast. Mm-hmm. Totally. Well, thanks for Feelings coming. Mutual. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. It, it was really, really fun. Thanks for uh, watching the movie, reviewing this one. There was also another time in the car fight scene where he took the dude's leg and he slammed it down on the broken glass on the window outside oh, and he drug yes. it through that too. Yes. <laughs> or the guy who was hanging brutal. outside the door who got blasted by the... The other yeah. that, you, you see his whole body just that yeah. shit hurted like oh <laughs> yeah yeah crazy awesome deaths abound in the raid too check it out um if you want to reach out to us or send any hate mail or also uh we have plans we'd like to bring uh steve's dad back on again in the future uh, a couple different avenues we're looking at but uh, if any of you have any questions about any of his time in like the secret service or later on he became a lawyer uh, or any of his like you know law enforcement career um, that you're curious about you want to send some questions that could be some talking points uh, they'd be much appreciated um, or anything else under the sun uh, our email is wax at waxing the porpoise.com or you can reach out to us on either of our socials. Instagram is at waxing the porpoise and Twitter is at waxing the porp. Um, Ghoulish uni gang, you guys want to plug, uh, where can people find Ghoulish university and what, what's your guys show all about? Yeah. So if you want to listen to us talk about tales from the crypt and, um, I guess other anthology stuff later down the road, you can find us on Twitter at ghoulish uni or Instagram at ghoulish university. Um, we're on, I know, Spotify and Apple for for podcasts and stuff. I need to get us on all the other streaming services. Um, hit me up if you need us on anything else. But um, if, uh, if you need anything else, you can also email us at ghoulishuniversity at gmail.com. Um, but, yeah, we just fawn over Daddy Crypt Keeper and the amazingness of Tales from the Crypt. It's a, it's a fun ride. Hell, yeah. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy the the format. We appreciate you guys have, have – for having us on in the past too. Um, hope to see you guys in the future on there. Oh yeah. There's some really, really good ones coming up like season, like the tail end of season three into all the way through like five. There's some really fucking like really great classic tales from the crypt episodes in there. Um, and I was thinking about it, if you guys keep it going, there's like a wealth of really cool anthology stuff. If you wanted to st- stick on that kind of train, uh, out there like tales from the dark side had a had a cool run for a couple seasons or the outer like limits you guys cherry picked like different like maybe a couple twilight zones like classic ones or outer Dude, limits like masters of, of horror is calling my fucking name yeah totally that's got some really cool ones too 
for sure. I'm a I'm a if you couldn't tell I'm a huge anthology guy, like series or movie in the horror vein. Those are like that's like my my bread and butter up there with like ghosty paranormal stuff and like the found footage. That's like that's my holy trifecta. Um cool. Yeah, check out Ghoulish Uni wherever you can. Um thank you guys again for uh coming on, talking raid. Um yeah. Sweet. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> um, looking forward to next Good. week. We'll have John staring John back once again, where we will be discussing Spectre, the penultimate. I hope I'm using that word right. Uh, yeah. Film in the Daniel Craig era, uh, Bond films um, from 2015. I think that's only on Fubo right now. Otherwise, it's a rental, but. Um, yeah, check that out if you haven't seen it already and join us back uh, next week for Spectre and we'll break it down uh, thanks once again uh, for joining us and we'll see you when we see you and we'll see you later Did you get a horse and live in the mountains someplace and don't bother anybody